Hello everyone, my name is Evan Freiberger, and today we're going to be talking about some more severe weather that's coming to the United States. We had a couple of storms last night, and that's going to continue into today. As we move throughout the morning and then eventually into the evening, we're going to be seeing a cold front develop from Tennessee all the way down into parts of Texas that are going to be bringing a chance for severe weather. And this isn't going to be like one of those storms that does those last minute strength training and then drinks a protein shake and creatine, takes a little bit of steroids, and then all of a sudden produces 10,000 tornadoes this is just gonna be your average one of the mill did four years of college lifts maybe once a week walks 30 minutes every day type of storm so in this forecast is exactly what we're gonna be going over so let's go ahead and get right into it but before we do if you do like this video make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and let's go ahead and get right into it so first off starting with our upper winds as our trough starts to eject here into the united states we're gonna have a little bit of a low pressure system up here bringing up some snow up into minnesota wisconsin and michigan and i know nobody is asking it for it up there but uh, mother nature says you're getting it anyways so there is going to be some snow a little bit of snow here and there up there into parts of minnesota the great lakes region and eventually that's going to be pulling up into the northeast but look further down here you see we have this little jet street that extends all the way from texas going into into parts of Louisiana, Arkansas, and then also Tennessee and Kentucky. That's going to kind of work with some of our other factors of our atmosphere here to produce a little bit of severe weather. Also with it is going to bring a little bit more fire conditions out there for parts of Nebraska going into Kansas, some high wind warnings over here in North and South Dakota going into Minnesota, Iowa, and then also into Illinois, and also down here into parts of Oklahoma. Sorry, I read that wrong. That is a wind advisory. So it's going to be a little bit windy out there. So so poke a couple holes into your umbrella just to make sure that that wind can flow through it and it doesn't turn upside down or inside out. A couple of winter storm warnings up here in Minnesota and Wisconsin, and then also a winter weather advisory around that. Some high wind warnings over there in Montana going down into Wyoming with a little bit of a fire danger over there into parts of North Carolina and Virginia. Now, in terms of severe weather today, we do have a slight risk as a two out of five for severe weather in the yellow and then a one out of five for severe weather in the green. Looking at our tornado threat, you can see that we do have a 5% tornado chance out here. That's a 5% chance for a tornado within a 25 mile radius here of Jackson, Mississippi and parts of Louisiana. So a little bit of an elevated chance for tornadoes. No guarantees. You will probably see some severe weather like damaging winds and hail out of this storm, but the tornado risk is relatively low. It is one of those things though that you're going to want to keep a close eye on throughout the day and just make sure you have a way to get alerts. And around that, we do have a 2% for tornadoes as well. That's going to extend from Kentucky down into Tennessee, parts of Alabama, Arkansas, Louisiana, and Texas. As we move into our hail risk, as you can see, we also have a 15% chance for some quarter-sized hail and above, and then also... In the green, we have a 5% chance. And as we come over here to the, our wind risk, we have another 15% risk for some 60 mile per hour winds and above, and the green is a 5% chance. Now, from our upper level winds to our lower level winds, we do have a little bit here in our lower level jet. You can see that anywhere from 38 to around 55 knots is going to be possible with this storm. Our strongest wind shear is going to be over here, but look at these wind vectors uh, down near the surface. And then as we switch back over uh, to our 500 millibar, you'll see what I'm talking about here but uh, you can see they're going kind of out of the west more to the east and a little bit to the northeast as we move into areas like tennessee coming over to our 500 millibar winds you can see they're coming mainly out of the west to the east so we're a little bit parallel and a little and in some areas we're a little bit more perpendicular but overall we're going to be expecting this storm to kind of be a linear line with a small chance at the beginning of it being maybe a little bit more supercellular before it congeals into a line of storm now when you overlay that over our instability here as we move through the day into around 3 p.m. This is when things are going to start to destabilize. You can see that we have, you know, a thousand to two thousand joules per kilogram, making it all the way up there into Tennessee and Kentucky. That's why we have a little bit of a tornado chance all the way down the line here with our strongest wind shear up here. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe we saw some maybe slightly elevated chances than the SPC is saying up here into parts of Tennessee and Kentucky. But as you can see, a lot of models kind of struggle to bring it up there, and some of them do bring it all the way up there 
So it is something to watch out for, but overall we're expecting mainly a linear line with a small chance of maybe some QLCS tornadoes, some briefer and weaker tornadoes are possible today. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen. It's a pretty darn conditional day. Now if we come over here to Radar O Beta and look at some of our high resolution models here, we're again back over here with the HRRR. This is essentially how today will most likely play out. We'll have this little area of some precipitation move up to the north. That's going to be bringing in some wintry conditions up there into parts of Minnesota and parts of Wisconsin, all the way up there in the UP of Michigan. This is at around 11 a.m. It's going to get started before then. But this is around the time that it's really going to start to get a little bit more widespread and heavier as we move throughout the day. Then shifting our focus back down to the south, you can see that maybe some thunderstorms could fire over there west of Nashville by a while. Oh, a wound <laughs> around 1 p.m. up there and then eventually we're going to see that cold front start to sink down once that starts to sink down into parts of tennessee arkansas and texas this is where we're going to see our first little chance here uh, for some severe weather and also we got to keep an eye uh, on these more discrete cells that are out here into parts of louisiana and mississippi eventually those might mature but it seems like the overall trend here for most of our models is that we're going to have just kind of a broken line of storms here uh, a linear line of storms with some small chances of severe weather and tornadoes as this moves throughout the area. Now, just in case that this does a little bit more than what we were expecting, I will be monitoring this event just to make sure that I don't need to go live. So if you want to have somebody that will go live, if something kind of hits the fan for today, hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications because that's the best way to get notified when I go live. But yeah, this is at around 10 p.m. and you can see that we have a pretty solid line here all the way from Shreveport into parts of Mississippi, also working its way up into t Tennessee in the Nashville area. And then as we move up back up to the north here and look at our snow, you can see we have some pretty heavy snow up here into northern Michigan. Also, northern Wisconsin's getting in on some snow as long as not a whole lot of dry air mixes in. But this is kind of the forecast cast right now up there into parts of the UP Michigan uh, uh, as well. Now coming back down to our cranky storms down here into the southeast, pushing this into the overnight hours, you can see that this line of thunderstorms is going to continue down into areas like Jackson our, and also Huntsville is around the 2 a, or not 2 a.m., the 12 a.m. period here. And then as we move into 1 a.m., 2 a.m., it's going to be going into Jackson and Birmingham. Knoxville is going to be getting in on some rain there as well. We're not really expecting that to be severe up there. And then eventually this line will sink down and kind of die off as we get into the 5 a.m. area and we might see a little bit of reorganization um you know kind of on the back side of this storm maybe some slight chances tomorrow for some severe weather down near new orleans mobile dothan tallahassee area as you can see we're not talking about you know very wide coverage here uh of our line of storms it's mainly going to be associated with this portion of the line it could move out of our way and then we, we might leave a boundary back there for some other storms to fire throughout the day maybe at around 4 p.m there and then eventually just kind of gets out of our hair as we move into 11 p.m now coming back over to our precipitation type here and looking at our snow chances coming back over to where we left off you could see that that snow is going to continue up there into the great lakes and kind of fizzle out by the time we get to around 2 a.m then tries to reorganize back over here as it moves into the toronto canadian area also some heavier snow could be possible over here into Vermont, New Hampshire, also going up into Maine. And then eventually, we're going to see the backside of this storm try to produce a little bit of a, that lake effect snow uh, over there near Buffalo. Coming over to our total snowfall with this event, you can see that we do have, you know, anywhere from four to eight inches possible over here near International Falls and then tapering down into about four to one inch possible the further south you go coming into wisconsin you can see we have a little area here of four to eight inches possible up here uh into portions like merrill also near Houghton as well there in the up of michigan and that tapers down into areas like kenesha or kashina I think that's how you say it. Uh, Marionette Green Bay, Appleton, one to two inches. And as you move into Michigan, you can see that we do have an area of around four to five inches possible near Traverse City, Gaylord, and also Mount Pleasant. And then coming over into the northeast, you can see we're expecting anywhere from four to five inches being possible uh, there into parts of Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. 
looking at our temperatures here for the next couple of days, you can see it's definitely going to start to warm up as we move uh, into the future. Definitely a nice day to day down there in the southeast and also into Texas. But that's right before that little bit of a cold front kind of sinks down in the area. That's why tomorrow is going to be a little bit cooler down here in the southeast. But overall, across most of the United States, we're talking about 40s and 50s um, and 60s. Really not a whole lot of spots around here that you can really see those 30 degree temperatures holding on maybe up there into Maine and New Hampshire and Vermont. But yeah, it's going to be pretty warm out there for a lot of folks. I mean, really, really nice temperatures across the entire United States. It is definitely an indication that spring is definitely here. And it's probably going to be here for, to stay from here on out. We could still have some cold shots here and there. But, you know, overall, we're going to be starting to see that heat build like you just asked the basketball team to construct a building. But overall, down here in the Texas, I mean, we have like maybe a couple, uh, a couple of spots here that are going to be approaching 90 degree temperatures already. And we're definitely going to be hitting some 90 degree temperatures over here into parts of Arizona and southeastern California with widespread 70s and 60s across the central plains going into the Ozarks Midwest and Ohio Valley as we move into the 25th here peak heating hours and eventually obviously as we go into the nighttime hours it's going to cool down a bit still going to be getting into those 20s and 30s as we move into the nighttime hours up here in the Great Lakes and the Northeast but then as we move uh, into the next day those cower off to the north back into the Canada where they belong and we start to see that heat try to make a push up all the way up into Canada where we could potentially see some 50 degree temperatures make it as far north as the Canadian United States border. But that's going to be it for me, folks. Thank you for tuning in for this brief little update. And I will see you guys on the next video. We're going to be posting once every other day because after this storm moves through, it's going to be quiet for a little bit. As you can see, looking at our supercell composite, there are a couple little areas we might have to watch out for over the next couple of days. But overall, probably not going to see another more organized shot of severe weather until about the 29th. And that kind of dissipates really quickly. And then eventually, I mean, just look at that. Just really not a whole lot happening here in the United States until potentially we get into April. But I mean, long term range models are looking like we're going to be kind of stuck in just the worst pattern possible that nice weather pattern <laughs> which uh, obviously is what we need after what happened in march but if something pops up in the models you know i'll be here and i'll see you guys on the next one peace